By the way, buckle up because it is time to travel to that galaxy far, far away. Boy, what a morning it's been so far. We're giving you a first look inside Disneyland Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. Fox 12's Joe V has built a droid. He's flown the Millennium Falcon, and he joins us now with more. Joe. Hey, Kim and Sean, and I've got another VIP right now. I want you to meet Scott Trowbridge. Uh, he is the creative executive of Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, basically the man who oversaw this massive project. Scott, more than 14 acres of Star Wars, the largest project of its kind for Disneyland. When this was handed to you, you were making a planet from scratch. Walk us through how you did this. Well, yeah, I mean, the first thing you think is, oh my gosh, we're gonna bring Star Wars to life for people. The second thing you think is, oh my gosh, the fans. How are we gonna make sure that we do something that the fans are gonna be happy with and proud of? Not just the Star Wars fans, but the Disneyland fans and the Disney World fans. Um, and so it all becomes like, okay, now, getting started. Let's build the team. Let's call the best people, the folks at Lucasfilm, the folks at ILM, fabrication, technology, creative experts from literally across the globe have participated in bringing these 40 years of dreams to life. I'm one of those fans. I saw Empire Strikes Back when I was four years old, back in 1980. Uh, I've walked around this place the last two days. It's incredible. The rides are one thing. We'll talk about that later. But what are some of the other unique sites that we'll see here that we get to visit? Oh, yeah. I mean, it is tr truly a, a, a planet-sized experience between the, the spaceport that we're standing in right now or our marketplace with our street market and all the things that are there, the things you can buy and taste and experience there. And then there's the, the, the ancient ruins where we find the resistance encamped, kind of like hiding from the First Order. So there's lots of things to see and do here. Now, Scott just mentioned they have a marketplace here on the planet of Batu. So right now we want to show you a little tape piece as we make our way and uh, did a little shopping in a galaxy far, far away. Check this out. Our first stop, Black Spire Outfitters. This is Elisa, and this is where I guess all the well-dressed Jedi shop. You've got, this looks like Obi-Wan Kenobi's robes. Ray's outfit from The Last Jedi. Jedi robes, all sorts of cool stuff there. Am I freaking you out yet that I know all this? I feel like you're doing really good. Here we are at the Toydarian Toy Maker. The Toydarian Toy Maker. Now, was this named after Watto, who's a Toydarian? Pretty good. And you've got Yoda, yep. you've got Chewie. We have Wicket, the Ewok. You're not freaked out though, right? No, absolutely not. Okay. We've also got uh, toys and games and musical instruments. So here we've got uh, Sabat cards. So rumor has it, you know, if you get pretty good, you could potentially win a Millennium Falcon. It happened to Han Solo. Exactly. We've also got Stormy, the Stormtrooper. You know where that one's from? Oh man, you're stumping me now. Yeah. Yeah. So Jin's room and Rogue One. Ah, oh, okay. We've also got musical instruments for you as well potentially in the... Oh, wow. So you can play that in the cantina. Yep. All right. I love it. Oh, my gosh. We have got Porgs. We have got a Loath Cat. Correct. You didn't know I knew what a Loath Cat was, but there you go. We've also got a Sleeping Loath Cat there. Oh, my gosh. Look at this guy. Don't wake the baby. So we have our Kowakian Monkey Lizard. It looks a lot like Salacious Crumb. The sidekick of Jabba the Hutt. Has the same cackling laugh. <laughs> Wampas and Wrath Tars and Loath Cats. Oh my. I'll take one of everything. All right. Thank you. Again, I think that uh, young lady might have been a little taken aback by how much a grown man knew about all those various creatures of the Star Wars universe. Now, uh, coming up a little bit later on Good Day Oregon, if you haven't seen this, we're going to take you inside the Millennium Falcon, Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run. But, Scott, thank you so much. Congratulations on Galaxy's Edge. Oh, thanks, and thanks for coming to the edge of the galaxy. And, and as a life lifelong uh, Star Wars fan, I just... Thank you. Oh. <laughs> okay. Joe's getting choked Can't up see. in here. Get, him, get that guy some tissues. <laughs> oh, so fun. I love Joe's excitement, too, yeah, you know, too. because like you said, he has been a lifelong Star Wars yeah. fan. So, And you know what? Really quick, I wanted to say last hour you asked, <clears throat> what are they closing to make room for this? <clears throat> My understanding is now, based on the article I read, they expanded a lot of Frontierland. So they shut down, like, the barbecue joint and, some, and the petting zoo, but no rides that I gotcha. could tell. Uh, gotcha. And then they bought some new land as well. Yeah. Right? See, see, that yeah. was perfect for Joe. As soon as they open up their Seinfeld uh, oh, wing, then it's time it. for me. Yeah. Uh, all the episodes, yes. all the lines, all the, uh, I'm all the sure stuff I'm sure that's coming to Disneyland soon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, it's, it's a very broad audience, yeah.